So let's say we go back in time and I need a chair. I'm going to contact a chair maker and I'm going to explain to them that I would like them to build me a chair. And they're going to say to me, how big would you like your chair? And in that time, there are measurement systems like cubits, which is elbow to fingertips. Span, which is uh, the span of your hand. Palm, which is the width of your palm. And digit, which is the width of your thumb. And so I might say, I would like a chair that is three cubits tall. And to, no, wait, wait, wait. One um, cubit deep and one cubit wide. And so the chair maker would make me a chair and a little while later would deliver it to me. And oh my gosh, this chair is enormous. And I am angry because this chair is too big and I cannot sit in this chair. Well, what happened? Well, the person making the chair was much bigger than I was. And they used their cubits, which were much bigger than I am, and I get a very ridiculous chair. And so there's a problem with unstandardized measurement that everybody used their own body parts, right? And we can see where that could go wrong. So early attempts at standardized measurement, a lot of them are known. Um, the first one was from the Egyptians and they used a royal cubit to build the pyramids. So everybody had a cubit stick um, and that's what they would use to build. The Romans had a mile that was a thousand paces and a pace is two steps. So like uh, right foot, left foot. And then when you stick your right foot down again, that would be a pace. And so they measured things out in those Roman miles. The British came along and used the yard, which is the distance from your nose to your fingertip with your hand stretched out. And King Henry decided to standardize it as his yard, right? So we've got that yard. He then said a yard should be further separated into three parts, which would eventually be called the feet. And each foot should be separated into 12 inches uh, which were just smaller sections. They weren't called inches yet. And an inch was then defined as three barley corns because um, seeds were a big way to measure things back then. As you can see, a strangely complicated system based on a king's measurement. So along comes the metric system in the 1700s. And they said, you know what? We need a more standardized system that everybody can use that's not based on whatever person is in charge. And so they said, we're going to use a meter. And a meter is one ten thousandth of the distance from the pole to the equator. Then if we need to measure things that are like really far, we're going to use kilometers, which is a thousand meters. Um, and if we're going to talk about things that are much smaller, we can do centimeters and there's a hundred centimeters in a meter, just like there's a hundred cents in a dollar because cent means 100 and millimeters, which are the teeny, teeny, tiny marks, um, on that ruler, because, um, sometimes we need to measure things that are very, very, very thin. Um, then the next thing that they had to deal with was mass. Well, like I said, grains were a really common thing um, back in the day because seeds grow surprisingly consistently and uniform. And so we could measure um, like the distance of a paper in seeds. And the Romans used uh, the carob seed to measure the mass of things. We would put them on scales or on, or on um, balances. Uh, 1728 carob seeds was a Roman Libra. 144 was a Roman ounce, which means that the Romans had 12 ounces to a pound uh, of their pound. The British come along and they decide they're going to make the British pound. They're going to use the LB because a Libra was a pound in the Romans. That's why it's LB. And we're going to make it 16 ounces because we're British and we do what we want, right? So we've got all these measurements cruising around. Metric system again comes around in France in the late 1700s. And they say, we're going to do a gram. And a gram is actually a very small amount of mass, uh, about the mass of a paperclip, because they're used to measuring things in grains, you know. A kilogram is a thousand grams. We would use that to measure something like a person. And a milligram is a teeny tiny amount, uh, one one thousandth of a gram. And that's what we can use to measure things like medicines. Um, volume, again, was a situation that they measured in what? You guessed it, grains. Um, and so the Egyptians would drop seeds into jars and they would measure how many seeds the jar held and that would be the volume of that jar. A very um, laborious counting situation as you can imagine. 
the British then came along and said that they were going to have the gallon be their uh, major metric. And a gallon would be further separated into four quarts, and a quart would be separated into two pints, and a pint would be separated into four gills, and a gill would be separated into five ounces, so there would be 160 ounces in a gallon. Then the Americans said, you know what, gills are weird, and so we're going to say that the two pints are separated into two cups, there's eight ounces in each cup, and so our American gallon is going to be 128 ounces, because we said so. So again, the uh, 1700s metric system says we're going to use the liter, and the liter is actually pretty big compared to some of these other things, right? Um, Kiloliters we use to measure very large things like swimming pools, a thousand liters, milliliters, one one thousandth of a liter we can use to measure um, a lot of things actually. It's what like sodas are measured in, those little lines on a graduated cylinder. And here's where the metric system is beautiful. They didn't only standardize each individual thing, but they standardized all of the systems together because the metric system is based on water. One milliliter of water weighs one gram and takes up one cubic centimeter of space. And it's so simple and so brilliant and so integrated um, that those things can be put back and forth. And so now if I go to somebody and I say, I need a chair that's two meters tall by a half a meter wide, I just call somebody up and they're like, yeah, cool, no problem because everybody has the same measurement tool and they make me the perfect chair, right? So these standard me me measurement systems are awesome and the metric system 